Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I want to take a look at this little device here. <coughs> this is the Soyuz Launcher. Soyuz is a company that specializes in making really high-end uh, microphones. This is not a microphone. It's something they call a microphone launcher, I guess. It says here on the package, let's see. Uh, take your sound with you. Custom transformer imparts color and depth. Um, boosts soft signals and performs incredibly with any interface. Levitates between headphones. Brings studio quality to your live shows. Yeah, so what it's doing is like you connect your, your microphone, it's running through the custom circuitry, the custom um, transformer, and it colors it in, in a beautiful Soyuz way and out comes this beautifully colored sound and yeah I want to try it out I just want to mention that when they designed this they had this microphone in mind a lot so I think they've fine-tuned it to sound really good with the Shure SM7B I've been using this a lot I've had it for years but actually I'm, I've been finding it difficult to produce this microphone because Almost all of the time, it sounds a bit dense, a bit like close, a bit um, radio-like. And in order to kind of break it up a bit, make it more airy, make it like, more uh, beautiful, sing better, um, I, I, I struggle with that. I think it's really difficult. Make this really weird, specialized EQs. I just never really get this sit in the mix the way I want it. But with this one, I hope that that process is going to be much easier. It's going to take a stand and make this sound different uh, and different in a, in a more pleasant way, I hope. So I'm going to try this out now uh, on my different microphones, the, the SM7B, this one, the E935, and some other microphones that I've borrowed. And yeah, just going to have to make some musical piece first to sing something to. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I think I'm gonna do a cover song of one of my own songs, older songs, uh, uh, and I wanna do this. I care about you. My normal voice, my sexy voice, bass voice, vulnerable voice. Uh, I'm gonna test the S, F, S, K, and P, and those kind of sound. I make a little poem that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's see. Sweet. <laughs> doesn't make any sense, but we're trying to be consistent. Uh, okay. Ah, 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 ah. That's the plan. Let's do it. I'm going to try to just introduce this every microphone with my regular talking voice, uh, which would be this. This is with the Soyuz launcher uh, involved in it. And as you can hear, it's already revealing some of the flavor, isn't it? This is a microphone. It's called Sennheiser. E935 and it's really good. It's kind of crispier and I'd say the the male mumbling frequencies are yeah molded into the mix in a in a very subtle and nice way I say. I've been using it for vocals, for interviews, for uh, the opening segments of many of my videos. Still with the Sennheiser E935 uh, but this time it's going through the Soyuz launcher. My sexy voice would be something like this, where I kind of lean back on my voice. And well, the idea with having this sexy voice, as I told you before, is to kind of see how it handles these subtle, uh, subtle tones and uh, sweet talk through 
whatever you want to hear about, like oscillators and uh, perhaps like synthesizers and microphones, articulation when you're kind of soft in your voice. And I think we can already kind of hear that. It's, it's going, it's doing something with the sound, right? It's kind of making it more articulate in a very subtle way. And then we switch to my bass voice. Well, not many people know that, but I've actually got a fair amount of bass in my voice. Yeah, so how about that bass voice? Well, down here we can hear again that the kind of bass frequencies are perhaps more controlled and uh, I could just call it up whenever I want to. Yeah, this would be my bass voice. I think it's doing a really good job in balancing the bass and the high frequencies and it's overall just making it a really pleasant experience. The vulnerable voice is something where you kind of re recess your voice from reaching the actual uh, true potential of your voice because you're afraid. I think it's an interesting case in trying to pinpoint this uh, subtle changes that this size launcher is doing to the sound i think sweet sassy sorcerer sweet sassy sorcerer from friends fluffy foes from friends fluffy foes shivering wishes and riches shivering wishes and riches cannot come closer to cuckoo's proper popsticles and peppers cannot come closer to cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers doesn't make any sense but i try to illustrate some different sounds that ah, 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 ah. This is a good mic. It's a very good microphone. Uh, depending on what I hear in the monitoring, I might adjust my voice uh, to kind of match my image of my voice. So, but I'm trying to be really consistent and not make too many changes. Okay, so about the song. Let's do the song. Yeah. Huh. Testing the microphone. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there, I care about you. Care about you. I care about you. Care about you. I 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 care about you. Yeah, so this is with the Soyuz launcher activated and I think it does something if you listen closely and I like it. Okay, next microphone. Okay, so this is the Shure uh, SM58 that Deluxe Music here in Oslo were very kind to, uh, to lend me. I don't need to gain it a lot, a little bit more than the Sennheiser. That would be my regular 
talking voice introducing this microphone. And when we gain it, the more we gain it, we could hear that the Soyuz launcher is not noise-free. It has a noise. Right now, I've gained it too much. We can hear the noise in there. This is noise that you can expand away or use noise gates and stuff. Uh, but for uh, for this, I'm going to do it later, show you a way how to suppress the noise. It's a super uh, common microphone. It's one of the, uh, I'd say, it it's become a standard. This is what you'll see in every life stage in the whole world for a vocalist. The Soyuz launcher is using phantom power to uh, to work. So you need to feed it phantom power and then you can connect any microphone to it that doesn't require phantom power. Well, um, I think the idea with this silly, sexy voice is to kind of see how it performs in different sorts of regions. And I think those male mumbling frequencies, they're kind of um, very prominent here. I'm not even sure why I'm calling it a sexy voice. It, perhaps it's just a silly idea, but I think it's got something in there worthy of uh, kind of exploration. If I go down here to the bass register, uh, I think it still makes a, a really good balance between the bass. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, well, in the bass register, we can um, hear that it's again kind of making... Uh, I'm not sure if we we'll call it reducing the bass, but it's doing something to make the bass a little bit uh, easier to manage and uh, balancing the bass and the tops in a very subtle way, I'd say. I feel very insecure when I'm using this voice, but it's a good point to to make in terms of the upper lower register. Hello, this is Cuckoo and... I'm not really sure again uh, why I'm doing this, but I feel like it's serving a purpose. I'm sure they've been testing this particular mic a lot because it's so common uh, when developing the Soyuz launcher. Uh, I was just uh, curious to see what it sounds like with this kind of uh, box involved. Sweet sassy sorcerer. Sweet sassy sorcerer from friends fluffy foes from friends fluffy foes shivering wishes and riches shivering wishes and riches cannot come closer to cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers cannot come closer to cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers proper yeah it means absolutely nothing, and so please don't make up any meaningful interpretation of this non-poem. Um, okay. Ah, 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 ah. Record a song. Yeah. Hey. Hey, hey. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there. I care about you 
Ooh, I care about you. Care about you. I 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 care about you. Yeah, there you go. SM58 with a Soyuz launcher. Gain, 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 gain. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Shure SM7B is a very good microphone. It's been used for radio, uh, but the music community and producers, they use it a lot for vocals, I think. Just uh, want to mention that this requires a lot of gain, so you need a, an audio interface that can gain it, or a preamp that is clean and then can gain it like 60 dB or something like uh, a, a great deal of gain is needed. And I'm using the Audio Fuse, which is a, a great interface. I just gain it and it's good to go. And it's very clear. No prominent noise. I, I think you can hear a tad of noise creeping in when you gain it to the maximum like this. That's the noise there. But it's it's not too bad. It's totally within the limits of what it can work with. So shout out to uh, Arturia for uh, a good compact useful great preamps uh, good interface okay testing 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 you know this requires a lot of gain so we need to gain it a lot to reach the same levels as with the other microphones and uh, so now we're in the the launcher territory and we can instantly hear that some of that noise that we were hearing earlier when we kind of needed to gain more it's coming in there now so if you're going to use the the Soyuz launcher with the the SM7B you need to to know how to suppress noise in a nice way I'm going to keep this recording clean and with no noise suppression just to see what you have to work with and then later on I'm going to show you a trick a trick but I don't know a method with, uh, for instance, um, an expander. You can use an expander to suppress noise. It, anyhow, I think this soft kind of uh, voice where you end up with a sort of smirk in your voice. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to, to kind of talk like that sometimes. Well, we can instantly hear a lot, a lot of, of um, articulation and sort of... Uh, uh, presence and uh, I think the majority of it is due to what the Soyuz launcher is doing to the audio here in its custom transformer. So when we go back down there in the bass frequencies uh, we can hear that it still has a crisp presence and uh, uh, well represented bass tones in there. Again I think is really just very pleasant to to listen to the sound going through the Soyuz. It's subtle, but I think it's helping out shaping the sound. And all of those mumbling frequencies, they they just sit in there in the very natural way. My takeaway from this a Soyuz launcher would be a mumbling frequencies control and articulation and presence. I'm not sure if it makes any sense to test it anymore I've done it a couple of times now so not sure if it's making a point or not but well well using this voice you know with, without the launcher I was uh, talking about having more of a presence in the voice and I can hear that with the launcher involved uh, it definitely does that to the voice sweet sassy sorcerer sweet sassy sorcerer from friends fluffy foes from friends fluffy foes shivering wishes and riches shivering wishes and riches cannot come closer to cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers 
cannot come closer to Cuckoo's proper popsticles and peppers. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, there you go. Let's sing the song. Yeah. SM7B. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there, I care about you. Ooh, 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 ooh. I care about you. Care about you. Ooh, ooh. I care about you. Oh. I care about you. Oh. I care about you. I care about you. Oh, I care about you. Yeah, sure. SM Seven B through the Soyuz launcher. Clean recording, but we're gonna process it later. Again, check, 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 check. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, hey. Okay, this is uh, an interesting choice of a microphone in this context because this actually needs phantom power to work. And the Soyuz launcher does not pass on the phantom power, it's using it for its own benefits. But uh, this also can host a battery. So I have a battery inside this and it's powered currently. Okay, the launcher is connected. This is the, the first time we need to actually lower the gain. We need to pad it because this is powered and it's already giving a, a, a loud and clear signal. So uh, the Soyuz uh, is boosting it and it's a bit too hot right now. So I'm going to lower the pad. It's The gain is a zero right now. So um, we need to make it minus 20. There you go, minus 20, and then gain it a little bit. So, around here, around here, I reckon. Anyhow, Rode NT3. It's the first microphone that I bought, ever. So, it's been with me for over 20 years, I think. Wow, that's a long time. But this is a really convenient uh, situation where we get a really hot signal into the Soyuz. Because then we can lower it, and we... We're, have none of that noise so now we padded it and actually reduced uh, the um, the gain and the noise is just so low so it doesn't make any uh, nothing I don't think this is typically a mumbling uh, f microphone which is good the frequency is already kind of uh, in there, but I can hear a high frequency in there that is above everything else. That kind of frequency range hits, um, which, yeah, it could be a bit, it could be nice, but it could also be a bit difficult to tame once you start EQing and synthesizers and oscillators, FM synthesis, FM synthesis. This is really nice. I think what Soyuz Launcher is doing is, again, 
kind of managing the the mix a little bit in a weird way the the mumbling frequencies and the the high pitch frequencies they uh yeah they glue together in a nice way so this is the bass frequency and what it sounds like there i still kind of miss that Sawyer's articulation uh, so it'd be interesting to see what happens when we're running through the Sawyer's so once we go down to the sexy bass voice wow it just became the sexy bass voice <laughs> uh, I think wow it's actually it's doing so much more than I anticipated maybe it's behaving slightly differently when there's a loud volume coming in and it tackles loud volume now that we have sort of gain reduced uh, yeah that's really interesting I think it's doing a tremendous job here and taking the base of this sound uh, and still having a really good articulation here wow that's interesting yeah actually this is the first time we hear a microphone that's powered and this captures this in a much more precise way somehow it just all everything subtle in there but still i think it would benefit from having a more uh, um, a, a presence in there somehow what i was missing was some sort of upper mid-range uh, articulation i think soyuz is doing something there to help it but perhaps because there's a loud volume coming in, we still hear the mumbling frequencies. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just keep my voice running to to make you hear whatever it is that we're hearing. Sweet sassy sorcerer. Sweet sassy sorcerer from friends fluffy foes. From friends fluffy foes. Shivering wishes and riches, shivering wishes and riches, cannot come closer to Cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers. Cannot come closer to Cuckoo's proper popsicles and peppers. Ah, ah, ah. Too shabby. Let's sing the song. Yeah. Huh. Oh. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there, I care about you. Ooh, 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 ooh. I care about you. Ooh, care about you. Ooh, ooh. I care about you. Ooh, ooh. I care about you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I care about you I care about you I care about you Yeah, so that's that concludes all of the recordings of all of the microphones Now, let's move over to some post-production and how to uh, uh, manage the, the noise when there is noise uh, Okay, let's do that Okay, so by now, I hope you have like a fair impression of what this does to the microphones in different circumstances. And um, what I want to do now is to turn your attention to this microphone. You could hear that when we were uh, handling the SM7B, uh, we needed to gain it quite a lot. 
and the audio fuse has a really clear gain, but once we're running this, uh, we could hear that the gain going on here uh, adds a little bit of noise. It's not too bad, we can handle it, uh, but it's there, so it needs to be addressed. So the, the way I'd solve that would be with a downward expander. A downward expander is a technique to expand the dynamic range of a sound, uh, but not upward, but downward. That means that everything that is uh, silent below a certain threshold uh, could, ex um, could be made even more silent. So when there is just silence and the noise, you can make that noise be even more silent. And once you get close to that threshold uh, and get o above it, uh, you uh, raise the levels to the normal levels again. So that way we can we could handle the noise. And also the noise will be present when the level is high and it's actually adding a certain texture that might even be desirable. Now this is an identity box. It's not a clean gain. It's not. I mean, we've got this one, Cloud Lifter, they're setting out to be a really clean gain box, but in reality, it's also slightly coloring the sound. And I'd say it's kind of losing a little bit of the definition, very, very subtly. But in my test, I, I actually think it's not that clean that they're setting out to be. Um, and that is a choice. This is also, this is like a highly colored uh, sound. Is it? Yeah, so let's open up the multiband compressor and see. Uh, I'm gonna make it full screen. Can I do that? Cool. This is the noise. Whether you are here, whether you. Yeah. So uh, it's gained a lot, and the noise is there. Let's uh, let's treat it. So first of all. Just click somewhere, make a uh, full, uh, a one band compressor, or it's a multi band compressor, but I'm going to treat everything in this case. And then we're going to make this node here, or this band, uh, into not compress, but expand. And, and then the threshold here. Everything below the threshold value is going to be treated. So if the threshold is at the minimum position, nothing will be uh, treated. Uh, so we can kind of look at this level here. Whether you are here. See the noise is about there. Whether you and then the breathing starts around there. <laughs> And then the vocal starts about that. So perhaps we could set this level to around where the breathing is uh, to as a starting point to see what happens. We could hear that the noise was slightly lower. So let's look at the other ones, the other settings here. We got range. Let's turn the range uh, down, see what happens. Whether you... Okay, so the range is uh, the amount. So if the amount is there, we wouldn't hear a change, I think. So let's turn the range down and say, yeah, take away the, the noise completely. Whether you... Yeah. It's already working. Let's see what else we could do. We can make the attack faster if we want to. Or maybe slower. Whether you... Whether you... We could turn the threshold a little even further up to kind of be a bit more gentle with the breathing. Whether you are here... Maybe s slow down the attack. The release time, we could make it a bit longer perhaps to have more air in the release. Let's see if it's... Add this is probably going to add noise after the vocal. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I 
uh, let's make a, a shorter release time. Whether you are... Okay, turn it off. With on. Sometimes it could be a bit too much. Maybe the range is going to make it sound a little bit artificial. I mean, in every recording, there is air, and now we're just stripping it completely of air. Maybe we should just have a tad of the noise there. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here. I care about you. And the ratio would be, if you turn up the ratio, it would be more aggressive and like making a uh, more obvious uh, beginning and end of the the compression or the expansion. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care. You can hear it's almost stepping in it. Like, <laughs> Uh, but if we turn the ratio down, it becomes more and more uh, transparent and to the point where it's, uh, when it's down here, it's probably not even going to be uh, expanded. Let's listen. Now, so let's find a, a, a level where it's not sounding too aggressive, but it's efficient. Now we can look at this yellow line here to see the indication of what it's doing. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care. I, I'll try to raise the, the threshold even further. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Okay, so let's listen to it together with the, the, the instrumental parts that I made earlier and see uh, what it sounds like. It's still unmixed, so this is just a raw recording um, with the Soyuz. Yeah. Hey. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here. I care about you I care about you uh, So in order to mix it in this case um, I'm not going to make like a super extensive mixing tutorial but um, just what I'd do is an EQ, a compressor and a little reverb With the EQ I could kind of shape the sound to uh, marry the instrumental parts and make them fit together in the same world. Uh, with a compressor, I would uh, reduce the dynamics of the sound to, to make it uh, sit within the same limits as the in instrumental parts and make it kind of, yeah, fit it in there in a more controlled way. And with the reverb, I'll add a little uh, tad of room to it to make it eat glue into the music even further just a tad I, I would do something like this this is like a super basic uh, starting point I reduce the bass I would take the mumbling frequencies around uh, 150 hertz or so in my case with my voice and make like a slight dynamic EQ uh, at that level to kind of reduce the attacks of the mumbling frequencies. And then I'd probably raise the, the tops a little bit. You can see here, this is this is like super, super basic. Let's listen to what it does to the sound. Okay, before. Ooh, 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 ooh. I care about you. Care about you, who, who. Just giving it a slight little facelift, like making it slightly crispier, and also uh, reducing this mumble frequency, and uh, also re uh, referred to as mud in a lot of uh, scenarios I've heard. So let's see what it sounds like together now. You. <laughs> 
are there I care about you ooh, 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 ooh. I care about you I care about you. I think just making a, a slight little uh, uh, adjustment like this helps tremendously. And I've got to be honest, without this device, I I always need to make all this like super specific, uh, like go in here and measure the... I care about you. Make a little measurement like this and then take care of everything that's sticking out but but when I use this I have a, a, a little bit of the same uh, experience as when I was borrowing the, the high-end microphone from Soyuz and uh, I mean that that one of course is is a totally different league but a little bit of that same experience where I'm thinking you know I don't have to do that much I, I just need to do a slight very minor adjustments and yeah yeah i actually like what it's doing okay so the next thing i do is a compressor and also very basic i'm using fab filter here as well as you can see i just i think they they do great value for the money and great audio quality let's see i'm gonna solo this whether you are him, whether you are her. And because we've done that uh, downward expansion, uh, we have taken care of the noise. So now we don't have that much noise to worry about when we're doing the compression. See, we can illustrate it. Ooh. Okay, maybe I'll adjust the, the downward compression slightly after all. Now we're compressing kind of compressing the high levels and also raising the whole compression. So now I was a bit gentle perhaps with the range there. So maybe I should expand the range after all. Because we're going to raise the, the noise level now with the compression. Ooh. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here. I care about you. Okay, I think that helped a lot. I think I could probably work even further with getting the attack and release right and make it slightly smoother perhaps with both the knee setting and the ratio. But it's okay for now. So the compressor is going to follow this curve. This is nice because there's a graphical interface here so we can see what it's doing. Whether you are here. So the threshold there is going to go up this line and once it's starting to come to the threshold uh, it's going to uh, flatten out the volume. So it's going to make it more compressed. And then we're going to take all of this and kind of race it to the desired uh, gain in the end. So threshold is the level where this uh, compression happens. Ratio is how much of this um, is happening yeah so if the ratio is low there's not going to be any compression if it the the higher it is the more it's going to compress so i said it what was it around there hey i care about you yeah and the the knee is how smooth this transition is going to make be Okay, so let's listen to it now again with the music. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there. And by the way, mixing vocals, I'm using a headset now. This is not good when mixing vocals. Everything sounds close and, and nice in the headset. I know there are some super high-end headset that's supposedly uh, good for mixing vocals too, but... When you're going to set the levels of vocals in the in instrumentals, uh, you, you need to, to listen to the monitors. So I'm going to do that just for now to see if the levels are okay. I care about you. Ooh, 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 ooh. I care about 
about you. Also, after going straight from the the headphone experience to monitors, actually, I should have I should take a break to let my ears kind of uh, uh, reset because now everything sounds a little bit dull in comparison to this very close experience with with the headset. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna go for it anyway. One thing when you're mixing vocals is to listen to the different volume levels, like low volume, whether you are him, whether you high volumes, are her, whether you are there. I mean, at a high volume, it sounds good, but once I turn it down, I could hear that the levels of the vocals are actually maybe a tad too loud in, in relation to the instrumental. I care about you. I care about you. I turn it down like that and listen to a loud volume again. I care about you. I care about you. I care about you. Okay. So. I'm not going to perfect this, but I, I think I'm on the right track. It needs more perfection, though. So uh, what I do next is, um, in this case, I add a little reverb. And let's listen to the reverb alone first and see what it sounds like. Totally wet. Maybe a bit of the muddy frequencies in the reverb. So in this particular reverb from Fab Filter, I can control the decay rate EQ and also post EQ of the whole thing after it's been decayed. So if I hear that there is something a bit too much of that muddy frequencies around there, again, yeah, I can see it, 145, the muddy uh, mumble frequency. I could take care of, of it in the decay in I mean in the reverb engine. Let's see what what it does. Mm, I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are and also I can address it in the actual uh, post EQ. Let's see what it does there. Maybe there's too much crisp stuff going on in the EQ. Maybe it's going to be uh, uh, disturbing the actual vocals. I don't know, maybe I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. Okay, let's not spend too much time on this. But the thing is, I'm not going to use the reverb a lot. I'm just going to have a tad in there to kind of glue it all together. I care about you. I care about you. Uh -oh. Maybe around there, five or six percent or something. I mean, it depends on the music and the style and everything, your personal preferences and everything. Let's see what it sounds like. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there, I care about you. Ooh, 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 ooh. I care about you. Let's say we're happy with that. That's not too bad. Let's listen to the whole piece. And it sounds like this. Yeah. Hey. Whether you are here, whether you are there, whether you are here, I care about you. I care about you. Whether you are him, whether you are her, whether you are there, I care about you. I care about you. 
about you. Care about you. I 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 care about you. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, I hope this has been a, a nice experience for you, getting to know the Soyuz launch a little bit, and also having some ideas of how to handle noise, especially with high-gain microphones. Um, yeah, cool. This is uh, Cuckoo, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to support my work here on, on uh, YouTube, uh, please consider going to Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding platforms in subscription form, which is a great place for supporting independent artists and creators like myself and others. I support uh, a bunch of people there, and I do it because I value their work and not because I want anything in uh, return. I would already do that because of their work. So I just want to support people because I value their work. And if you value my work, perhaps, you, uh, you'd you like to support me over time at Patreon, please consider that. It's super helpful. Thank you, everyone who's doing that. Super helpful. And, uh, yeah, take it to my heart. Uh, if you want to buy stuff that I make, I've got a web store as well over at store.truecuckoo.com. Uh, all of the links are in the description and also on my webpage. So just head over there to get all the links. I've got T-shirts too with kind of nice designs that I made. If you fancy those T-shirts that you see me wearing in the intros, um, yeah, go there, get a T-shirt. It's really nice. One thing that I actually noticed and I thought about, I never end videos by saying, please like and subscribe, uh, which virtually every YouTuber does. I, uh, it's, I mean, of course I want people to like and subscribe because it helps my channel grow and stuff, but I just forget about it. And, uh, if you, if you like it, I suspect you'd like, <laughs> like it with a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, I just suppose that people subscribe. So I just don't want to push it on people. So, uh, uh, there's going to be an exception. Please like and subscribe if you, <laughs> if you enjoy my videos and yeah. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you hope you enjoyed it. See you soon again. Peace out.